All right, as skiing is finishing up around the country here, we are starting to look forward to our ski picking trips coming up this summer. Um, after a not very good winter in the Midwest here where there wasn't much racing and almost no skiing on natural snow outside of the World Cup, uh, that was a good, uh, good little bonus to show the world that there usually is snow uh, in Minneapolis, but outside of that weekend, pretty much no natural snow skiing for everyone. Um, but we're excited for next winter. It's got to be better than this past one, so we're really looking forward to it. Um, as well as we're looking forward to the kind of new changes in the lineup from from the brands that we that we pick. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. We're going to kind of go over each one of them, um, what they're adding, what they're changing from from these past years. We'll kind of do one by one. Um, and we'll start with Fisher. Not much changes from Fisher. Um, they have been kind of doing this slow rollout of their Speedmax Helium, their skate ski, adding added a lot of carbon to it, a little bit different construction. I'm sure most of you have heard of it by now, but it's starting to just be more and more of their focus in production. So they're starting to make more of them. They're starting to be more widely available or ordering, able to order more, things like that. Whereas that first year only had a handful of pair. Last year was a little bit more available. Now it looks like it's even more available. It kind of seems to be making that tr transition to being their flagship skate ski model at this point. Um, we are super excited. We uh, we had gotten a chance to ski on it a couple times. Again, just a little bit more than we had the previous season since we had so little. Um, and they're super fun, super light underfoot. Um, put your you know, really lift your foot up, and it's almost kind of like wow. It really feels like there's nothing there. Not really. Uh, super easy to describe that feeling of how light they truly are. Um, super maneuverable, climbing feels great on them, uh, things like that. So we've been super, super happy with how those have been performing and, and just skiing um, overall. Um, switching to their classic skis, they really aren't much changes there. Um, the 902 and the 812 models are kind of their their go-to. Um, the 812, it sounds like, is kind of going to be seeing some changes, but like we've seen from Fisher, it seems to be slow and over time, which is probably the best way to do it. Um, but the 902 kind of being that universal go-to uni warm style classic ski is still there. One of our favorite options for classic skis for sure. Um, so not many changes from Fisher this year, but we're super excited to see have more options to pick through from those heliums. It's going to be going to be really excited to see that production keep growing and and seeing get more people on them and hearing more things. I don't think we had any bad reviews from last year of anything we picked. Everybody that got a pair really really enjoyed them. Uh, moving on to Solomon, again there's not a ton of changes. Just kind of the you'll even see the graphic is really fairly similar on it. Um, there's just small changes. So you kind of have to know what you're looking for to see the changes in the graphic. The biggest one being the, are going to a plate system. So obviously the, the days of SNS are over and, and now NNN is there. So really no reason to be screwing a binding in anymore. Um, now that pretty much every other brand is, is on NNN with a plate. Um, so very similar to Fisher or Rossi that you've seen in the past, but um, did seem to change change the way the ski felt a little bit. We had a chance to ski on these, both the Skate and Classic, a couple times this year. Uh, we're really excited about it. Felt like it added some stiffness and stability on the Skate Ski. And then the Classic Ski, we really liked how easily it closed underfoot. So we're really excited. Think the ski will, will feel a little bit different. Um, it's definitely gonna, definitely gonna look a little bit different. And then you have that adjustability of the binding too, um, which in Classic is, is awesome, obviously. Go forward, more grip backwards for more glide. Um, skate, not as big of a deal. We've kind of dialed into liking zero and minus one as kind of our go-to spots for binding positions on those. But next year we'll play around with it more and obviously encourage the individual skier to play around with that as well. Now, moving to Atomic, probably the biggest change in all the lineup this year. Um, they actually have a new core material. Uh, which is really exciting. Um, they, they have been designing it over the last few years, kind of implementing it on the World Cup, obviously kind of see things there first before it ever makes it to the market. And we don't know it's old graphic, but it's the new core. Um, really, really excited. Um, so they had previously just been kind of purchasing their core material. Now it's all being made in-house in Altenmarkt. Um, so super excited. They, we got a chance to ski on both Skate and Classic really just totally 
different feel, but in a really good way. Um, they, they felt phenomenal. Um, we had really good luck with them. Um, when we got to demo them, we're really excited to get more of those for next year and, and do more in-depth, like long-term review. Whereas we were only able to ski on it a couple times um, for shorter periods. Obviously, like Solomon, sister company, they have the same shift plate on there. Um, so it'll be the same style plate and binding, but the core material is now different, which is super exciting stuff. Um, really, really excited to, to try those. The last, uh, but not least, brand that we, we have will be Birazi. And their biggest change comes on the skate ski side of things, where they are introducing a new model. So we're kind of familiar with their S1, S2, S3 lineup. S1 being the cold ski, S2 kind of being that universal, S3 having that clear base material um, for the warm and wet conditions. Now the SX is kind of a different mold and a different... Uh, different construction as well. Um, they're going to have a little bit lower resting camber height as well as just going to have a little bit uh, less pressure, kind of a little longer contact zone in the tail um, to kind of distribute that out. Um, kind of one of the bigger changes that hopefully the camera will pick up is from the S2 to that new SX is it is actually not quite as wide as you can kind of see through here. It's not this on the S2, it's a little bit wider than it is through here. So they shed some material in there, um, which when you're skiing on it, kind of feels like the ski isn't really telling you what to do as much. So you kind of, you can kind of control that a little bit more. Doesn't necessarily feel quite as stiff underneath your foot. Um, that's kind of what we got from that SX. So the way we've been kind of looking at it, at least as of right now, from when we've skied on it is that this will be kind of more of your universal model into softer snow conditions and then this one will be kind of the s2 traditionally will lean towards harder track snow um so that's really the the exciting change from there and then we also have the graphic update um, on the razis as well that uh, that looks pretty slick the classic side of things for them no changes they got the c1 c2 c3 still really good models that C2 offering a really punchy kick feeling. So got if you kick it down hard, it's gonna feel really good, but then really fast and free. Um, C1 being good hard wax and C3 being that warm and wet. And cool. finally, we have the uh, new Skate X system from Madsuits, kind of the hot topic over the uh, end of the season here and into the spring um, as pictures were, were leaked first and then everyone's wondering. And so Madsuits released some things and, and got the uh, Got the juices flowing for everyone, kind of in a top, hot topic here. So I uh, wanted to show this off a little bit as we will have some to, available for, for pre-order, but most of those are going to be sold before the season even comes in. So uh, by the time the fall is here, if you're looking for this, really gonna have a hard time finding it, especially from us, we are going to sell out, I, am, I would imagine. Um, but to show this off just a little bit, um, obviously you have the pin that is moved down here instead of being up at the front of the toe, kind of placing that more under the ball of your foot. Um, obviously binding systems have been pretty s consistent over the last few years. You know, you had that jump from S and S to N and N, but functionally they're very similar. S and S had that second bar back further and then N just has a stiffer bumper kind of relies on when I made the switch, I really didn't notice much of a difference. Um, I believe that is how most people felt. This feel is quite a bit different. Um, I got a chance to ski on it once this spring here. I was really happy with it. It felt really good. It's definitely different. Definitely have to be in a good, proper ski position with good form and good technique to, to really feel the benefits of pushing off more on, from that ball of your foot area. And then you really can't do any sort of movements with your toe um, in that because there's just nothing there. So it's a little different feeling. You kind of get kind of get used to it, but felt really good. Um, some changes from the Madsu skis as well. Uh, one of the one, big ones being we found that they are quite a bit stiffer through the tip here. So if you've seen Madsu's before, they used to really be able to flop around quite a bit. Uh, this felt really good, felt really fast, felt really, they're still super lightweight like usual, um, but just a stiffer ski overall, uh, which I really, really am excited to, to get the opportunity to ski on some more um, as, it, as it felt really good and felt really stable compared to some of their previous models. So that is everything. Um, 
if you are interested in any of these models, have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can shoot us an email, give us a call. If you want to get on the pick list, again, you can email us, call us, but another way to do it is a ski request form. I'll add that in the description so you can fill that out. Get on the list. We'll go pick all these models this summer from their uh, respective factories and warehouses. And so we are super excited to uh, find, some, find some good skis for you. Thanks.